So vectors are important because they can be used to describe our motion of our object. For example, any object's motion can be described using four variables. These variables are displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time. And out of these four variables, three of them are vectors. Displacement, velocity, and acceleration are all vectors. They have both a magnitude as well as direction. <coughs> now, whenever our path is linear, it's straight, and our acceleration is constant, we can use the following four equations. So, in each equation, our xi is our initial position, xf is our final position, xf minus xi is our displacement, our t is time elapsed, a is our acceleration, vi and vf are initial velocity and final velocity. Now, notice that xi and xf are not the distance. They're the position of our object. And this guy is displacement, and it's not the distance, because this guy has both magnitude as well as direction. <coughs> so let's derive these equations. Let me show you where these four equations come from. So before we begin our derivation, it's important to make the following note. These formulas that we're about to derive only work under constant acceleration. In other words, if our acceleration is not constant, we cannot use any of these formulas. So let's begin by first defining what acceleration is. Remember, acceleration is a vector, so that means it has both magnitude as well as direction. And the formula for acceleration is change in our time or change in velocity divided by change in time. So we can define our velocity in the following way our final velocity of our object minus initial velocity of our object divided by our t final or our final time minus t initial. Now note that in our problems our t initial is simply zero and that means t final minus zero is simply t final. So we usually represent our change in time as simply our elapsed time by the letter t. So now, let's take this t in our denominator and bring it over to this side. And we get the following formula. Our acceleration times time equals our final velocity minus initial velocity. And now, let's bring this initial velocity to this side. And we get the following formula. Our v final equals v initial plus our acceleration times our time. So, in other words, if we know our initial velocity, and we know our acceleration, and we know our time, we can use these variables to find our final velocity of our object. But this only works for constant acceleration. So let's look at step two. What is our average velocity of our object? Well, recall that velocity is a vector, and its formula is given by displacement divided by change in time. So, our average velocity given or signified by the v with a bar on top is equal to our final position of our object minus our initial position of our object divided by our time or change in time or time elapsed. And once again, let's take this time and bring it to this side in the same way that we did for step one. And we get the following equation. Our average velocity times our time is equal to our final position minus initial position. And once again, in the same way that we brought this initial velocity to this side, let's bring this initial position to this side. And we get the following formula. Our final position is equal to our initial position plus our average velocity times our time. Now note the following. Because of constant acceleration, our velocity increases at a uniform rate. And that means our average velocity can be given in the following manner as well. It's simply the velocity midway between our initial and final velocities. In other words, our average velocity given by this v with a bar is equal to our final velocity plus our initial velocity divided by 2 because we have two velocities. So let's take this formula 
that we got above in step two. And let's take this formula that we just got and bring this guy into this guy. So we're, trying, we're basically plugging this equation into this average velocity. And we get the following. So our final position equals our initial position plus we, we take this whole formula and, pl and plug it into this average velocity and we get our v final plus v initial divided by 2 multiplied by this time multiplied by t. And now let's take our equation that we got in step 1 for v final and plug it into this v final. And we get the following. Get our x final or our final position equals our initial position plus in parentheses v initial plus v initial plus acceleration times time. And this factor we simply got from this formula from step one. The whole thing multiplied by time which we got from here and divided by two which we also got from here. And now let's combine this v initial and this v initial and multiply that by t and divide it by two and we get v initial uh, multiplied by time plus our acceleration times time times time, so at squared divided by our two. So this is the formula or the other formula that we were trying to derive. So, so far we've derived three formulas. First formula, our second formula, and third formula. So, th <coughs> so this formula is useful for finding our final velocity of our object. This formula is useful in finding our average velocity under constant acceleration conditions. And this formula is useful in finding our final position of our object, knowing our initial position, our initial velocity, our time, and our acceleration. So now let's derive our final equation.